Russ and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of The Joy of Painting. If this is your first time with us, let me extend a personal invitation for you to drag out some brushes and some colours and paint along with us on each show and I'll show you how to do some fantastic paintings. And if you've been with us before, let me thank you for inviting us back for another series. So I'm going to have them run all the colours across the screen that you need today to paint along with us. And so far, what I've got done, I've got standard canvas and I'm going to coat in with the wet white, the liquid white, give it a good base. So it's just thin even coat of the liquid white. The liquid white makes it wet and makes it slick and allows us to actually blend colour right here on the palette rather than use it here on the palette. So let's take off and do a painting that's very, very simple. And if you've never painted before, this is one that you can do. Start off with a small brush today, the two inch brush. And we're going to go for a bit of Prussian blue, and it's a very strong, but strong colour. So we don't need much. Just pull a little bit out and tap the bristles like so. That will ensure that we can have nice, even distribution of colour all the way through the bristles. And let's go right up here. The canvas is covered with liquid white, so we're going to start doing the sky. Just doing little crisscrosses, little flexes, little crisscrosses. Something like that. That simple. That easy. And it's very easy to go back and make it darker, but it's a silver time to take it off. You can, but it's much easier to just start off with a little bit of colour and you can always add more if you want. So I suggest you start with just a little bit of the blue and you can add as much as you want later on. So just like so. I'm going to leave some areas sort of open. They don't have as much colour, so just like there. There. Maybe, maybe if I take it down a bit. Just like so. If you've painted with us before, you know that this piece of canvas is your world. In your world you can do anything you want, anything your heart desires. Take a little bit more, make it a bit darker up here. Have total freedom to do it however you want. That's what makes it so fantastic. And maybe I'll have a cloud so I'll leave a bit of a spot open right there. And maybe we'll just see what happens. There. You can make it as dark as you want, or as light as you want. So, I'm an absolute nut for water, so I love water. I'm going to get this old brush, pull it some more blue. Just add a bit of water to the bristles like that. Same way as we did before. And let's go right up in here, and then just pull across. Start from the outside and work in. Like that. This will be still water today. Let's go do the same from the other side. Still water is normally flat. Maybe a little bit more colour. Um, my intention is leaving this little area open here, and if everything works just right, that will look like a nice little bit of reflection. A nice little sheen of light that comes across there. Makes your painting exciting. Now very gently we can just go across the entire thing, like that. And that takes out the little brush strokes, and sort of brings everything together. Okay. Now, the most fun part of this whole technique is washing the brush, so just a little bit of water, this is acrylic paint, so just into the bit of water and just shake off the excess and then beat the devil out of it, beat the devil out of it. It's always my favourite part. That really is the fun part of this whole technique. Now just use the same old brush. I'm just going to use this one brush today. Just use a small brush today and maybe the knife. So let's now get some of this white on. And just tap it in, tap it in. And back up in here, we said we're going to have a cloud, so let's just tap on, tap in the cloud. Tap it, just tap it. All we're looking for is just a very basic shape for our little cloud. Let's have a big cloud. There. It's like so. In your world, you decide where all the little clouds live. Let's put another one over here. Totally and completely up to you. And maybe that's how well it's here. Okay, so nice little clouds there. All we're doing is put a basic shade at this point. Very basic. And I'll wash the old brush again. Shake off the excess. Just dry it up. Beat the devil out of it. 
Sometimes I'll just use a paper towel on a towel and just make sure it's really dry. Now very gently, one air into there. Just going to fluff this up. Just fluff them up, fluff them up. Tease them a little bit and very lightly. Just caress them. Gently, gently across them. Something like so. It's that easy. Now we've got some fantastic clouds, we've got some nice water at the bottom. There. Just dry off the brush again. So I get that just every day from people all across the country that have never tried painting before. And they've seen this on TV, and they've tried this and it works and they're so excited. And they take their painting over to their family, over to their friends, and people don't believe they've done it. And some people have told me that they have family members look close and see if they can actually find numbers, like they've done a paint by number. Okay, let's take some white. Throw a little bit of the white on the knife here. Let's get some bit of the blue and some of the black in there. And maybe a bit of the red. Make it look a nice grey. The greyish colour bit has a little bit of the crimson in it. Let's just take a nice roll up of that on the knife and just mix all that in together. And then using the brush again, just wiggle it, wiggle it, and pull it to a nice sharp edge. So maybe you have some little trees that live far, far away. Just take the brush touch and just give it a little brush. So just like that, and give it a little brush. All there, just don't want too much detail on this, too far away. So just a few little things in here. When you're doing landscapes, things that are far away should not show you a lot of detail. So a few little trees in here. Just a bit of a reflection. Just so you just see indications of every blue, every twig, you don't see all of it. And that's what we're looking for. So maybe just another little guy here. Nice little happy tree. Just put them in there. Just slightly, just, just blend it in, just blend it in. And you decide how many trees you want. It's all up to you, it's your world. You have as many or as few trees as you want. Each of us sees nature through different eyes and you should paint what you see. Painting is very individual. That's the reason why I don't like to use patterns or drawings on here first. I think it restricts creativity sometimes. Just do it and enjoy it. Very quickly you learn to compose as you paint and that really may be the joy of painting. So I'll brush right down here. Let's fill in. I'm going to create a little mist down here. Let's just try another brush and set it all going. Just create a little mist. And this looks like a good place to have a good misty area. Just by tapping the base of it like that, lift upwards, and easy. That's easy. Now then, let's get the first brush again. And just make, put a little thing in there, just like that. It stands out more now, wherever you want. One of the greatest things with this technique is reflection. So just I'm going to turn to reflect right down into the water, just very pull it straight down like that and go across. And we have instant reflections, that easy. Just like that, there. And I'm going to take the knife again, just clean it off. And take a bit of the white, just go to put it there. Just a little roll of paint on the end of the knife. We'll just cut a little waterline. And we'll lose that along here. Now this is still water, so the lines will be nice and straight. So you can go anywhere you want to go with them, but they should be basically straight. Because the water's flat, they should be basically straight. If they're not flat, it won't look right, but the water's going to run right after your painting. And it's fine when you have to tie back it to the side of your painting to catch the water. Just put a few water lines in here. A few water lines, a few straight little water lines. Alright. Let's 
So wash the brush again. And let's just dry it off. Shake off the excess. And just cover everything in the house. Time to get crazy now. Let's take some more of this blue. And some of the black. And some red in there. And some green and some brown. Looking for a nice dark colour. I think I'm going to pick, mix in a pretty good pile of it. Okay, so a nice dark brown colour there. Let's go back to the brush. And let's make some gorgeous trees using a brush this big. It's important to load the brush correctly. Just wiggle it a bit, wiggle it. That pulls the paint down towards the end of the bristles and it sharpens it, just like you would a fine knife. Okay, let's go out of here. Now I've got to make a big decision now, world. So let's make a tree here. The tree that lives right there. The tops of gravis, and just with the corner of the brush, working back and forth. Start and centre, work outwards. Paint that outwards. And these big old trees, there's a bit more paint, and they're just, with right in your brush, you just have to push them out. So let's start another one here. Just push them out. So, let's do another one, just push it out. You can see, you just push the tree out of there. Need a bit more paint on here. So down here we don't really care. There's lots of little trees so we don't need as much detail down there. Let's do another tree here. Let's do another one down here. And just push it out, push it out. And down here you don't really care. You can load it with a paint roller. Let's start a new style of painting with a paint roller. So a nice few little trees there, quite close up. Just using the corner of the brush when you first start, and as you work down, you push harder and harder just to bend those bristles down. Something like so. <laughs> I think we've got to have little trees here, but you can have as many little trees, as many happy little trees as you want. So it's all entirely up to you. It's your trees, you can have as many trees or as few trees as you want. Let's maybe put another little tree in here. Let's get a bit more of the painting. Put another one here, so. And just with the corner of the brush, let's have a little bend in this one. And just push it out, push it out, push it out. Nice little tree there. And let's have some over here. Now let's put in some indication of in reflections in here. So let's just pull it down again. A bit of colour and brush and just pull it down. A nice reflection, just pull it down. And add a little land in there. And this is all still just using that same brush all using that same brush, just put an indication of a little bit of land. We'll come back and highlight all of that afterwards. But there, and go across, that easy. And we have instant reflections. That might be one of the neatest things that happens in this technique. Right. Let's use another brush, let's use a little white, and let's make some white, and some dark gold sienna, Nice brown colour. And let's just put in some nice little happy tree trunks here and there. So let's put in just like that. You can change it a few trees just by putting in indication of tree trunks here and there. Because we don't know how many trees are behind that. So that's how you make a few trees into a whole forest. You didn't know you had that kind of power, did you? But you do. So on your canvas, you have all the power that you want. So let's just put a few nice highlights in there, a few of those tree trunks. Should we make some more trees? Let's load up the brush the same way. Let's go over to this side. Let's get this brush back. And just let's make one over the side and maybe this tree goes off the canvas, so just start in the corner. Let's start a nice big tree over here. Oh, that is a big tree. We can have as many trees as we want. And so you can do anything that you believe you can do, and I know you can do this. Yeah. Maybe, should we have another one here? Yeah, let's have another one that lives right here. So I start with the corner and just push out, push out, push out. We don't care, we can separate all that with just highlights. So some nice trees there. This is a good practice 
a painting to give you some practice just using this bigger brush. You can make some fantastic greens, you can make some fantastic painting, you can do a demonstration, show your friends or family how you can do this. And when you say, a brush that looks like you're going to be doing decorating, one they used to paint the barn with last week, they won't believe you can do this. So uh, let's just do one more tree here. And, uh, just again, pushing out, pushing out. Comes right down. And then here, we'll just fill it up. Fill it up. Can't tell how many trees are there. Just put some colour in. And then down here, and down here. Let's put some tree trunks in there. Once again, using that brown, we'll just a bit of white. Let's just fill in this tree. Let's assume he's a big, strong tree, the papa tree that lives down here. So it's fill in the scape, the indications of little wounds of the hand with the knife. So just to give the impression of more trees. Okay. Now, fun times. I'm just going to use that same brush. I'm just going to use the yellow and a bit of green, a bit of yellow ochre. Just change the flavour a little bit. So it's blowing back in that colour instantly. We have green. We have a gorgeous green colour. Blow it back up to a chisel edge right? once again. Same way, very sharp. There you go. Load it up. Let's go up here. And let's begin. Decide which trees are in the foreground and which are in the background. So we'll start with this one here. Just do the tree that's farthest away first. And just add that bit of highlight, bit of colour. So add a bit more green in there. So you have to make these decisions, which trees where. There you go, that looks nice. Bit more, mix a bit more colour in, change the flavour a little bit. This tree will have a bit of a different flavour to it, a bit of a different taste. As it works downwards, it gets darker and darker, darker. Down here at the bottom here, there's shadows. Big shadows. And also trees are normally bright at the top because you have that newer growth, those newer leaves. Yeah. Just the least little touch. And just do the same here. Just add that little bit of colour here. There we go. Maybe just that little bit more yellow and green on that one. Bring out those colours. Bring out those colours. So I'm going to change my brush. Get it a nice dry brush now. And we just paint layer and layer on top and you get that illusion of trees getting closer. And each layer just needs to get thinner as you go from the back to the front. Now, let's load the brush different. This time I'm going to tap it into the colour. So I'm going to break it open. Tap it into the group colour with a little push. Let's put a little bit of yellow out there. Give it a little push. That lets a little bit of paint right on the edge. Let's go out in here. Maybe there's going to be some land here. Just touch. And just follow those angles. Think about the lay of the land. The way the lay, land flies downwards. It's the most important. Look at that there. Lovely. Normally, water always sets in a recess area. So, usually, there's a reason. Usually, the land comes downwards. Pay attention to those angles. And there we go, we've got a nice bit of land down there. Just do the same over on this side. So let's add, add over here. If it worked out pretty good, so just add some land down here. Keep adding, add that colour in, pull it down, and just make that little land. And there you go. Now let's think about painting is making these big decisions that you have to make. So when you have this much power, you have to use it correctly. With great power comes great responsibility. So, see, when I go home, I don't have any control over anything but the garbage. But here, I have control over everything. I can do anything I want. I can move whatever's here. So working layers always start farthest away on my forward, forward, forward. So just by tapping, you can make these little grassy areas. You can make them, you can make them as soft as velvet. I can make them very distinct. It's 
near the out to you. If it looks like a nice place, just have a good book, sit there, kick back, could talk to the animals. Now, now I'm going to pull the brush a different way and pull it in one direction. Straight down in one direction. And that will cause it to have a little curve in it. I'm going to have that curve at the top. Now that same old brush, I'm going to go right in here. I'm just going to push in a happy little bush or two. Push it, push it. Make your bristles bend a little bit. So get that little bush right there. So we've got a nice little bush. So just get some of that green on. Get all that green on again. And let's make a nice little friendly bush over here. Just push it in, push it in. Nice little bush here. Let's have another one here. Let's give him a little friend. So we just finish that one off over there. So some nice little friendly bushes. Don't rush, speed will come automatically as you get better and better at it and you learn how to load the brushes correctly. Put a little bit of yellow in there. And just put another little friendly bush here. You can have them anywhere. Now let's do the waterline. <coughs> let's just get some more white on there. Scalpel on the knife. And just put a little waterline under here. So this sort of why do I separate the two darks? So just waterline across there. And waterline across here. I'm going to keep these lines basically straight. There. Add a little ripple here and there. Let's keep these lines. I'm going to just take the clean knife. Let's put a few indication of sticks and little twigs that live over here. Some on the other side too. So I think we've got a finished painting here. Let's take a little bit of crimson, a little bit of paint yellow, and just sign it. For all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting. And God bless my friends.